Do you want to uh, start off by just saying like who you are and where people can find you? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so are you now or you start now or? Yeah. All right, uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Isaiah. Um, I live in Canada and you can find me on social media, Instagram and TikTok. Um, Isaiah Talks Faith is the tag, so I got a link tree in there as well, so you can find me there. And yeah, I just basically post about Christian content, you know, talk about God, Jesus, uh, things to do with life in general. Um, it's a pretty small account, but you know, growing and hopefully it reaches more people and we get the message out to more who are uh, lost in the world right now. So yeah, that's me. That, that's the basics. Love that. Yeah, definitely follow yeah. on social media. Yeah. You're on Instagram, do you do TikTok? I actually didn't look up if you do the TikTok stuff. Uh, yeah, I do. I think it's the same name, just like 98 at the end. 98. But yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. your Instagrams are awesome. I love, uh, I pre- such, it's so inspiring. Like when you're on lunch break and you just stumble upon it, it's like, oh man, that's exactly what I needed to hear today. <laughs> man, I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, Linktree, I, see, I used to be on Linktree. Everything was great. I loved Linktree. But then they like kicked me off for like, um, I forget what the phrase they used, but it was like, um, a, it was like either abusive or violent content. And I mean, if you know me, it's like, I don't even curse. <laughs> I know. I, I just think that. Really it's bad. Like, like, I don't know how, like nothing I've said is abusive or violent. Right. But like it's, it's a reason, right? It's a reason they can give and you can't argue it, right? You can't argue it. Once, yeah. once they say, because you can't argue this, you're like, all right, you have to live with it. It's your platform. So. Right. And so like, yeah. I found a, a couple of like friends of friends started this thing called libertylinks.io which is the same concept it's just like a a collection of your links just for people you know you send someone one link and then they can find all your links but it's just so basic so linktree was kind of cool because you can like decorate it and style it and kind of make it you know kind of cool looking or whatever this one's just kind of almost like overly simple but um once once you can get there you can get there right i mean right that's kind of if you just need a link you don't need to be mesmerized by (laughs) the appearance (laughs) But I just found it funny because like Linktree has like, I mean, just horrible stuff, you know, porn stuff, like just such inappropriate content. And then it's like, yeah, let's kick off the guy that's like sharing the gospel and kind of making jokes and being funny. (laughs) That's the guy we need to target and get off our platform. Can't have that. Oh, for sure. But uh, all the OnlyFans, feel free. (laughs) Hey, listen, it's not God's standard, right? It's the world's standard. So that's going to be all the time. But like, oh, for sure. For sure. And I I like report accounts and be like, hey, look, this is blatantly terrible for like kids to be seeing and like, yeah. you know, they're like, oh, this not, this doesn't violate our community guidelines. They're like, how? Right. But you know, <laughs> I right. mean, and that's, what and it that's is. I mean, that's good points. Like at the end of the day, it's like that's it's the beast, right? It's like mm-hmm. that's the beast, and it's the beast resources. And like as Christians, I have the stance of like we should always use the beast resources against itself. Like yeah. If Satan's giving you ground on the battlefield, take it. Oh yeah, <laughs> use it against sure. it. And then for when it's sure. taken back, when you're you're deplatformed and censored from some like satanic platform, it's like, okay, well, like no loss. Like okay, I don't have this yep. extra benefit, this extra platform to spread the gospel, but like I'll still do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll still oh, be elsewhere sure. doing it. Yeah, for sure. And you know, they'll see many content creators. They'll just like you know create a new platform or not a new platform, but a new a new uh, account. And then people that have followed before will follow them again, they'll grow again. So, you know, yeah. they kind of just keep at it. But yeah, unfortunately it's, it's the issue with a lot of these platforms is the three main ones that you can get most of the message out there are obviously all very liberal, very of the world, right? So like, it's, it, you, you, you want to go on places that are maybe less censoring, but then those aren't very popular. I mean, not many people see what you're making, right? So yeah, that's the balance there. Yeah, and it's like, I, I see it as like a good strategy. It's actually a question I had for you. I, I guess we just get into it. Is One of the questions is, is using technology and social media to spread the gospel a good thing? I mean, as someone who creates content, I'm going to say yes. You know, yeah. I mean, I, 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 yeah. I, I thought about it. I have thought about it for sure. Because like, and I've, I've thought in the past about like maybe deleting it because, you know, I look at all that's on there and you wonder like, you know, I obviously feel like, in person things like church you know community that's stuff you want to encourage people to really go to to get their information right if someone said hey uh, Zaya, what, do you, what do you think i should want to talk about god or whatever what should i where should i go 
I recommend you to go to church or talk to me in person or, uh, uh, you know, that kind of community. But like, I do believe there is a, a niche, I guess, on Instagram, especially with TikTok as well, to, to give us some sort of, you know, it's, it does spread a, a really good message farther, you know, than we can usually reach. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think in most ways it's a good thing, you know. I don't, I don't personally love uh, the the modernization, I guess, of a lot of the Christian content on here as well. Um, like I think I know a lot of times I'll see uh, creators will like use Christian messages in a very worldly way. I think that does kind of distort it a little bit. Um, it should be more about the message, not the entertainment value, I think. So yeah. that's the only thing I would have of that. But I mean, it is good. Like if TikTok, if TikTok is going to be like 98% really like awful stuff to that, to be a part of that small 2% that actually has something positive to say, I think is always, you know, that's what I get from it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was having a conversation with someone. They were saying like, a Christian on social media should always be quoting scripture. And I like that, like, as a highly suggested thing. But he was saying it as, like, necessary. Like, if you're going to make a post, you better be, you know, and it's like, I, I, yeah. to me, like, yeah, that, that should be a standard for, like, a preacher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you're preaching on Sunday, yes. If you're, mm-hmm. like, just a guy posting on social media, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, 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 like, like that's the thing, right? Like, I think a lot of people use a platform because they're Christians, then they start to believe that maybe they're wiser than they are, or they'll try to like start yeah. over explain. Like, like for me, I know my my bounds, right? Like, I'm not, I don't have any background in, in ministry or theology or anything. So, most of my stuff is just to be like inspiring, right? Yeah. But like, yeah. people be like, hey, what's that? What about this? If I have an opinion about something, I'll express it as my opinion, or if I like, I, I like know something from whatever. Sure, we'll get into that, or a mess. I'll say, mess me privately. We'll talk about this, but like on a public setting, like you have to know what you're talking about, like they or else you can be misleading people, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I get that. I get, I get that, yeah, because like yours, like, like, and that word inspiring too, because it's like you can see your video, and yeah, you're not quoting scripture necessarily, but like you're relating the gospel, <laughs> you're, you're relating, yeah. you're, you're telling important facts about life and about reality and about living well and about being a christian and it is like mm-hmm. motivating and inspiring so then when you go yeah. home it's like you are now encouraged to read the bible you're encouraged to pray tonight you're in incur- you're you're on that vibe of like feeling convicted of if you're doing something wrong or being like motivated to do more good um mm-hmm. i don't think it necessarily requires scripture but i actually like yeah. seriously had that conversation with someone and it was like i kind of i kind of like your spunk you know, <laughs> I kind of <laughs> like where your head's at with that, you know, but like, let's tone it down on it. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I like that, right? Just kind of like leading people into exploring God more, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like some of them will be content just based directly towards Christians. Like the messages are, you know, directly relating to Christians specifically. But the ones they're talking in general about, like inviting you to come to Jesus and come talk to God and get a relationship with Him, that's more of an invitation, right? So I do, I, I agree with that point you made there. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you want to? Um, I was on my, I was on my Christians that come on here to uh, share with the world their uh, testimony. Yeah. Yeah. So you mean mine? Yeah. 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 Right. So mine is probably the the, the stereotype pretty basic right I, I grew up in a christian home so my grandfather was a, a pastor at the church uh i grew up in the bahamas so that was interesting in itself um oh, wow. but my, yeah my dad was part of the church as well for a while and i think he didn't quite agree nothing in particular but like just he wanted to lead his household the way he felt was necessary so um my whole religious i guess you could say upbringing was all through in the home um and they had, I think, we were very focused, but at the same time, it did have some drawbacks, some benefits, right? So, um, very close to each other, close in the faith. I learned a lot from him. You know, he's a very uh, wise person. Um, but like, obviously, the community wasn't there. So, a lot of my, I guess, until like 1920, it was there was much of a, a community uh, aspect of it. It was more so just uh, living my life and individual uh, faith. 
Um, so I grew strong there, but not in a community sense, right? So um, coming here to Canada, I started you know, living and, and started growing in my faith and, and actually getting a grasp of, you know, what Christianity was outside of just the basics, you know, when you, I guess that childlike faith we talk about um, and uh, actually growing in that. And then I actually only recently, honestly, started going to church. Um, I went to one church a couple of times and now I'm a, a full-time uh, participant in another one here. So I moved recently, so um, yeah, I'm now part of this church and it's, it's an awesome time. And I think it's, it's really helped me grow in that area of my life that was lacking before. And I'm in a really good place, I think, spiritually right now. So it's it's a short testimony, right? But it's that's basic story. And yeah. I love it. Yeah. Never let you fall too far. I love that. Yeah. I'm always jealous of that. I think everyone's always jealous of like, if there is a dichotomy, like the two kind of like typical testimonies where it's like, like for me, I'm the opposite. I'm like born and raised non-believer, live just mm -hmm. a debaucherous, sinful life. Totally yeah, thought yeah. like God is not real, you know, totally <laughs> secular my whole life. And then you're just like yeah. smacked in the mouth and Christ comes to you when you're at your lowest, stops uh -huh. you from doing a horrible thing. And you're like, okay, this is undeniable. Totally transform your life. Your whole life's different, you know, radical encounter yeah. with Christ becomes a radical transformation. Um, yeah. But like, I get jealous of people who are like born and raised in the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I feel like it's the I, opposite. Like people almost born and raised in the church come to me and they're like, man, I like wish I was on as a, as on fire as you are. I wish I had I, like, oh. you know, that radical transformation. Like that's such like confirmation. I wish I had that. And it's almost like mm -hmm. the prodigal son and the other son. It's like yeah. at the end of the story, both of them are saved, but one was there the whole time enjoying mm -hmm. the house with the father the whole time. And one was like, went out in the world, failed, and had to like come back, <laughs> you know, and repent. Oh uh, yeah. But it's almost yeah, like had... both, at the end of the day, both are safe. So both are both are good, yeah. right? Both are in the right. Oh. It's just like a matter of how you got there, you know? Oh, for sure. No, that's always been something like, I like, oh, I wish if I had that moment, a coming to Jesus moment, you know, everyone talks about, right? Like, that's like, so for me, it's always been there. So you almost have to feel like you're trying harder not to get like a humdrum, like, you know, like it's always a part of your life. So it doesn't seem as special to someone who's like, like you said, just hit in the mouth with it. It's like, it's a big moment for you. And then it just completely transforms everything you've always known. Right. So yeah, totally the opposite spectrum. Like sometimes I'm jealous, like, Hey, you know, if I'd had that moment, it may, may feel more alive to me in that moment. But then it all balances out, I think at the end of the day and all people still think I did a video on this before as well. Like everyone's testimony matters, no matter which side you're on. And it relates to everybody in that situation, right? Because there's people like me who've been to faith and maybe they're about to fall out because they've always done the same thing. It's not, it's more of a religion, I guess. Whereas Christianity is a lifestyle, right? It's, it's, it's who you are. It's, it's a, a feeling of your spirit. So yeah, for sure though. It's, it is definitely that dynamic. It's always interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I get it a lot because I, I was... I was in California and I moved to Tennessee. And so it's also like night and day. It's like in California, you're oh. around like such non-believers that like Christians sure. almost have to be more on fire, you know? Oh. <laughs> and, yeah. But in Tennessee, it's like, yeah, everyone's a Christian, but like, and I hate doing this because I don't, I don't want to be the one passing judgment, but like, are they? Mm -hmm. You know, I've encountered oh, so many yeah. people that say they're Christian, but it's like, when's the last time you've been to church? Well, mm -hmm. two years ago. When's the last time you read yeah. the Bible? What? You read the book? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never? For sure. For sure. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, can... uh, I don't know, man. Like, I, 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 it is it is like an evangelist moment. It's a gospel conversation moment because it's like even this person's calling them a, themselves a Christian and they authentically believe it, but they're so yeah. off. They're, they're not mm -hmm. living accordingly. <laughs> yeah. You know? I, I feel that. I feel that. I'll, because like in the Bahamas, like I was saying before, it's, it's I think Christianity is more of a cultural thing. So like everyone just, inherently like the grandparents go to church you know and god is god is a known i guess idea but in terms of living it out a lot of people don't live it out so if you ask someone specifically about their faith what they believe or what god is they just know that there's a god and it's kind of like you just grew up in that system right so i guess there's a place like in the states as well tennessee i think you I say you've lived as well also like it's texas i would assume utah so the midwest states like there's there's a cultural difference right so like 
obviously California, New York, more liberal places. They'll have no God because places are supposed to be like Christian and spend like they push that. But like you said, are they actually living it out, right? So it's yeah. But I could definitely relate to the Bahamas was quite the same way in terms of that as well. So yeah. Do you miss the Bahamas? Uh I miss the Bahamas <laughs> when we have six, eight, ten inches of snow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what point the the question the answer varies depending on what month of the yeah, year we're in. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean even in, even in like the summertime when I'm trying to go for a swim in the ocean, the lake, and it's still freezing cold and I'm like feeling pins and needles, like I do miss the warm water. That's the one thing I miss. I miss the beaches and the water. Because I like I try, I try to swim here and it's painful. It's a challenge. <laughs> so, oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like lifestyle, lifestyle-wise, now um, it, it is a poor country in terms of like it's the main uh, places. So I don't miss that aspect of it. I think Canada's definitely been upgrade lifestyle-wise. Um, yeah. But now uh, weather, I love like right now. Perfect season. It's fall. You know, I can go out. I got my warmish clothes on, but it's nice fall colors coming in so I, I that's this got me the good time of year this is why i'm happy with canada yeah <laughs> yeah so tennessee's not as extreme but it's the same it's like yeah. i like i like that there are seasons in yes. san diego like there it's just perfect all the time mm-hmm. i think that makes people crazy <laughs> i think like it just really does like your, your sense of time doesn't exist like you, all of a sudden you're just oh. like oh yeah it's christmas I guess mm-hmm. I should, you know, oh, okay, like, oh, yeah, it is 4th it's, of July. Oh, okay, whatever. Because it's like, it all just feels the same. It all blends into each other. And then just oh, comfort. Yeah. Like, people just are comfortable. You're just so stagnant, you know? And, like, mm-hmm. now I'm in Tennessee, or, like, people who are, know that, who are, like, the Midwest or Canada or something, it's like, you have to plan accordingly. You have to plan oh. ahead. Okay, I'm getting my winter clothes out. Okay, I'm get. finally I can get the shorts out, you know? Okay, like I need, I'm gonna plan an outside event or something, but it's like I have to look up the weather. I have to, like, you kind of like need to take action. (laughs) And it forces you to take action and it forces you to like be considerate of like your environment. And when you're in paradise, it's just so like, ah, another day, (laughs) (laughs) whatever. Well, I'm not gonna lie. My my mom probably would enjoy paradise year round. Honestly, she right. she was used to Bahamas. She loved it. Now, you know, she's like, yeah, I I wouldn't mind being a nice 75 degrees most of the year. Yeah. So I I I respect that. But yeah, for sure, I got like a whole suitcase full of just my winter clothes ready to go. So like, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, in the moment, it's like paradise. Like if you're just like, what do what, what do I want to experience today? Like. A yeah. perfect day but just like the bigger picture overall i actually love now that i'm in tennessee you know it's like in the summer i'm working outside i get like super hot it's like 100 it feels like 115 humid like it feels like you're just working in like a swimming pool <laughs> like the air is just wet you know on a sunny day and then i'll flip mm-hmm. in the winter it doesn't really snow a lot here but it'll get like like 20 pre- 20 pretty consistently 30 pretty consistently yeah it's not super cold but just cold and yeah. oh. in that moment, you're like, this is miserable. I would, <laughs> I don't want to be here. But overall, like, I love that. I love the changing of the season. Yeah, it's like fall. The colors are starting to change. Like, the weather's starting to change. Um, I just uh-huh. like that there is change happening. Um, you know, yeah. things are blooming in the spring after being dead all year, you know. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, San Diego, and I imagine Bahamas is pretty similar where it's just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's, everything Bahamas, looks the same. Bahamas, it is the same. The nothing Bahamas changes. Like, yeah, the bomb has, has like two months where maybe you get fall weather, like relatively to like here, but like eight, nine, ten months out of the year, it's hot, and we'll we'll consistently get like 115 degrees in the summertime. So you literally cannot go outside. It's just unbearably hot. But like, yeah, it's it's like I did not enjoy that part of it. Like we used to work outside all the time. We, had like a little business we ran and we were outside a lot that was never fun yeah <laughs> i look forward i look forward i look forward to the winter time for sure yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well who who were you in 2010 and who will you be in 2030 
uh, in 2010, I was uh, not who I am now, but that way first. Um, like I said earlier, just I was, I took Christianity at face value. Um, so that's changed a lot. And I guess also I've, my personality has grown a lot since then. Um, I was, I think I was a very awkward kid growing up. <laughs> um, and I didn't have a lot of life experience as well. So um, I think who I was then was very, I guess, naive would be a good way to put it. I guess yeah. 2010, I would have 12. So um, 2030, hopefully I'm a leader in, in some aspect of my life. Um, I guess someone who is who has like a very direct path. Um, obviously, the way to God is a straight and narrow one, but like in life as well, just who knows exactly what he's doing with himself, um, where God has him in life. Hopefully, serving community as well. Hope that the person I am, you know, I guess eight years from now is someone who is like a genuine um, person, makes a real difference, you know, in community. Because yeah. Christianity is not about yourself, right? And I can work on myself all day, every day, and try and be the most perfect person and, and all that. But like, we're supposed to spread Jesus Christ, right? We're supposed to, you know, be a light. We're supposed to you know, bring others, you know, the, the, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few, right? So I, I want to, at that stage, I want to be one of the few that's actually making a, a significant difference, not for my credit or not so everyone knows who I am. So that, that's that's for God to know. That's all I really care about. Um, but just the, for myself to know and for God to, to do work for the kingdom consistently, I think is who I hope to be in the year 2030. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that was a question I had for you. So you want to be a servant in, by 2030, but are you a servant of the Lord now? Um, I, I would say yes, but I can definitely do a lot more, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're all, I, think, I think you're you're always going to feel that way, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, yes, but... <laughs> Yeah, but like, if I'm being honest, never, you know, there's enough. some moments there where I sat on my couch for 30 minutes where <laughs> I, I could have been doing a lot, I've been reaching out to someone, I could do a lot more for sure. Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, I, I think, I don't know, I think in the aspect of like bigger picture, like obviously we could always do more, but like I do have some, some thoughts, you know, about actually serving. Like, I think it's one thing to be a servant of Jesus Christ in my own life. I think I'm, to answer your question, I'm there now. Um, but to be a servant to others in Jesus Christ, I think it's a different thing. Like to, to actually consistently and loyally serve, like I said, in the community. That's, I think, where I would make the difference. So, yeah. yeah. Love that. Yeah. And are you on mission? What's that, sorry? Are you on mission? Uh, I think I am still freaking that out, to be honest with you. Yeah. Now, I think I have a lot, of, a lot of ideas in my mind of what I would want to do. Um, I think just finding my, I guess we'll call it a calling, but like, what I'm actually supposed to do um, and, and trying to pick the right one. Like, I would like, I would like my, like I'm trying, I'm in the process of trying to find a career work-wise. But I want that to, that to line up with who I am like in Christ and, and how I can use that to serve. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, like I'm, I'm interested in like instruction. So I, I would like to be able to, I haven't gotten into it yet. I would like to be able to get into that field, really understand it and then use that gift once I've mastered that to be able to help other people. Like there's a lot of practical applications that I think come with Christianity and like the people's lives in general, right? So there's one thing to, lift someone up and fill them spiritually feel so to eat feel so to be housed you know have shelter have clothes so i think that's a ministry I, I am definitely interested in kind of getting involved in it's just finding the right platform the base the right time to do it so yeah, yeah I, I have some i have some ideas we'll, we'll, i'll I'm, I'm hoping sooner than later i can start to figure that out but. yeah that's awesome yeah. um yeah, that's so awesome. Uh, I wish more people were like that. 
<laughs> like in that state of mind, you know? Yeah. And like honest too, where you're just like, I've, I'm not there yet. I could be doing more. I'm going to be, and like then motivate it, not just sitting in that like, oh, poor me, or oh, I'm not good enough, or oh, I'd, I've been messing up, but like, okay, yes, fact, but I'm going to yeah. be doing, but I'm about to take action, but I am taking action, but I like that. Yeah. Our culture is like, our society is suffering from like that victimhood. Mm-hmm. And it's tough because oh, like a lot of people are victims, you know, mm-hmm. and like, there is a lot of trauma. There is a lot of like bad parenting and like mm-hmm. bad societal influences. Like Satan is just oh. running loose, you know, sure. and like there's going to be a path of destruction left in the wake of that, you know, but like, mm-hmm. yes, you're a victim. Yes, there is trauma, but like. Are you going to sit in that? Are you going to let that destroy you? Are you going to let that keep you like sitting still and in a, yeah. in, a, in a state of like despair and hopelessness and like stagnitude? Or are you going to mm-hmm. like say, yes, I am X. I am this b- bad. These bad things have happened to me. Or like, yeah, these unfortunate things have happened to me, but I'm going to overcome it. But I'm going to like do yeah. better. But I'm going to rise up. I'm going to rebuild, reclaim, regrow, you know. I love mm-hmm. that. I love that. Yeah. Are you, um, do you consider yourself a kingdom man? Oof. Kingdom man. Um, (laughs) in the sense, in the sense that I am going to be with Jesus Christ one day. Yes. It's part of the kingdom. Um, but I think like we said before, it's like, you're not never going to be perfect. Right. And there's always going to be stuff you can improve on. But, uh, I am a firm believer in saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and, you live a life for God, you know where your eternity is. I think for, for a lot of Christians, like you need to be sure of who you are in, in God um, and not have this idea of oh, one mistake. I'm like, there's some people who don't, I guess, fully grasp like saved by grace through faith. Um, yeah. So they constantly trying to live up and try and like, obviously you're pushing to live as a Christian a good life. That's part of the process. But like, as if those things are gonna get you to heaven. Like, there's no amount of works you can do, right? They can, are going to just save you at this point. Um, so I think, for me, I just define a, a kingdom man as someone who is, is who is in Jesus Christ and is going to be going to the kingdom. And from that perspective, I would, I would say yes, for sure. Yeah. As, as is, I think, anyone who is saved by God, by Jesus' blood, kingdom man or kingdom woman. So. Yeah. All right, on. What is a man? What is a man? Love this topic. <laughs> um, what is a man and then uh, what is a woman? What is, oh, well, we can go with the gender rope. <laughs> no, <but> like, <laughs> uh, Not no, being graphic so, and uh, <laughs> keeping it appropriate yeah, no. for children, you know? <laughs> gotcha. no, um, so from a Christian perspective, again, a man is someone who lives for God. Um, the basics is a protector. You know, he's a leader. Um, he is the provider of the household, you know. Um, I, I fully believe in, in not the world stereotypes, but in God's stereotypes of what a man is yeah. from a biblical from a biblical perspective. And the same thing goes for women as well, like their role in the, in the home, their, their role in, in society in general. You know, we, we obviously, as time goes on, we try to like mold our beliefs and how we view people and masculinity and femininity, femininity as more of a, a world standard because it's more comfortable a lot of times. Um, but I believe in the most basic, you know, standards for what men are. You know, we're not we're not meant to be weak. You know, we're not meant to, you know. However, I don't want to insult, you know, men today, but like <laughs> the way they're the way they're brought up and, and the way that they, you know, are raised in the, in the home is definitely is def- definitely a difference. You can tell. Um, yeah. I mean, looking back in history and how men used to be and what men used to be able to do and accomplish compared to now. Um, I think, I don't, I don't think that will change societally now just because of the way the world works and the way it is. And uh, I guess more Western culture, I think, you know, look, you look to other cultures in the East or whatever, I'm sure there's still a lot of that that exists. Um, but yeah, no, a man is just a leader. He's, he's strong and in faith, he's strong in God, he leads home in God, you know, he raises kids up in a godly way based on scripture. So, you know, that's, that's my definition of a man. Love that. Yeah. Love that. 
Yeah, that's uh have you ever read um Kingdom Man by Tony Evans? I honestly, besides the Bible, I'll admit this now, I don't read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Like, I'm a reader, you right but I get why it like takes like a like a like almost like an autistic mind to like <laughs> it takes like a uniquely <laughs> weird person in this day and age to like like reading, you know, so I get it. I know. I, I prefer podcasts and stuff, read. but Sorry. Yeah, like I was yeah, no no I'm sure. Yeah, I'm saying uh, like podcast sure and I'll listen to a, I'll watch the movie version of a book. Like uh, yeah. in the case of Christ, <laughs> Pete Strobel. I watched the movie version and I, I felt it. It was great. I got the message. But like I I bought multiple books with the intent to read them. And I've just not I'm not can't get myself to do it, honestly. Yeah. No, I do not blame you. Yeah, I get it. I get. It. <laughs> yeah. No, I do feel guilty. I feel like I really should be reading because there's some really good books, really good messages, and like I feel like I could learn a lot from them. I just, I just, I don't know. Yeah, no, I feel you. Yeah, <laughs> there is. If you ever do read, there's a good book. <laughs> but he talks about kind of what you were saying. It's almost like I was like, I was like, has he has he read this before or something? Because like you were kind of answering his his like claims too, which was like. A man is a leader, whether he likes it or not. Yeah. You know, it's like men and women have these like roles, these God given roles. Like we were created by God designed for certain roles. Like, and it's clearly defined in his word, you know? Yeah. But like society will change that. The environment we're in will change that. Like the circumstances, like things will try to like change that or like, f like <laughs> for better or for worse. And lead you away yeah. from that but at the end of the day like men are leaders and mm -hmm. like sorry about it what are you gonna do about it complain and not lead yeah like you have people depending yeah. on you you know um mm -hmm. and that's like a whether you like it or not like sorry like you got to get to it you got to become the yeah. man that like your wife needs your children needs you know your parents need and if you don't mm -hmm. have like close family like your community needs you you know your church needs you if you're a believer like People need you to lead and like take charge and like, even if it's just a drop in the bucket, like there is change, like there is a a purpose and a role for you to serve and lead, and like as Christians especially, we should be taking that up and not running and hiding from that. Um, oh yeah. But yes, yeah, so I love that you like <laughs> so clearly understand that, and sometimes it's it's. Sometimes I have some, some tough conversations with Christians who are trying to, you know, the more like yeah. equalitarianism mindset yeah. instead of more like yeah. a compatibil compatibility, mm -hmm. compatibilism kind of vibe. Yeah. It's like, to me, it's just so, scripture just is compatibilism. But then you'll have these debates with people who are like the equalitarianism where it's like, oh man, and women are equal and should be doing the same mm -hmm. things or have interchangeable roles. And yeah. it's like, just like, I, can you... I, point to any scripture in the bible <laughs> any scripture to support your claim like yeah you can and, twist and manipulate scripture that's there that supports compatibilism and say it's wrong but can your side say here <laughs> here yeah. is proof here's evidence and like clearly that god wants this to happen or that this is the case you know for sure i, I think also like people like mix up equality for like worth i think that's the big thing it's like yeah. Yeah. when we, when we say when we say we're not equal, it doesn't mean that a man is better than a woman or a woman's better than a man. It just means we have different roles. And like exactly. you're saying, you have, to, you have to put effort into those roles. It's just, it's not everything comes naturally. Some things you have to actually work for, to work to be something. And those things, according to God's plan, make society run in the best way. As we can see, like society deteriorates when we start trying to push God's way aside, right? So, but for sure, for sure, that's... I think that is the biggest misconception. It's like, no, I'm not saying I'm better than you. You know, it's not like, oh, you're you're below, I'm above. Go go inside and clean while I go make the money. Like, there's obviously there's roles to that. Like, there's, there's like a man cannot raise a kid, child in the same way a woman can in certain aspects. In the same way a woman can't just raise a child the way a man does in a certain aspect. Everyone has a role that they play in, in raising children in, in society in the church, right? So, yeah. I like the thought too of like uh, like the difference between like a father and a mother, where it's like mm -hmm. a mother is more instinctively like caring and protective, yeah, and all about like safety, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, and a man is just kind of more like ah, let them, let them, yeah. let them live. <laughs> For sure, it's more like take risks, go out there, get stronger, get better, you know. Yeah. 
But it's like, even in that child's life, like from age like zero to five or, you know, ish, I don't know what the exact thing is. It's almost like you really need that mother. You need that. Oh, yeah. Keep them safe. Yeah, if they're like trying to stick a butter knife in an electrical socket, what they don't need is their dad going like, ah, let them learn a lesson. <laughs> ah, it'll exactly. be fine. It'll just shock them a little bit. No, they need a mom to be like, oh my gosh, stop, stop, get pull the knife out of his hand. Don't do that again. That's the mentality you need to have. When those exactly. kids then turn into like teenagers, what they mm-hmm. don't need is a mom saying like, don't take risks, do mm-hmm. everything safe, avoid conflict. You know, mm-hmm. run run back to mommy and she'll take care of Call your problems for you. Yeah, you know, sure. what you need is a dad to say like, hey, you're going to have to learn. You're going to have like life's, life's about to get tough for you and you got to learn to like you have mm-hmm. to start becoming an adult and taking care of your own problems, taking risks, yep. exploring, learning, like pushing you to kind of like do things yourself. Um, but that's like that perfect balance. Like that's that complimentary complementary exactly mm-hmm. like in, in its true form is that yeah like a child that's born needs a mom early in its life like literally Mm -hmm. needs (laughs) the food like literally needs like the warmth and the love and the touch the sensory touch you know but Mm -hmm. also like the emotional care of a mother like that protective caring instinct but then when that same Mm -hmm. child grows up what it needs is then that father more than anything Mm -hmm. to like lead it teach it provide for it you know teach it like explain how life works to it truly yeah. you know um yeah. but yeah it's you know but oh that's mean and sexist apparently and oh, <laughs> you're, for sure. you're now canceled for sure. For, for, sure. <laughs> for pointing out reality <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah for sure and that's that's just that's a society right and it's whatever whatever they feel like they need at the time you know from either, I guess, either financial perspective in, in, in society now or what they're trying to push it's all about the time and you know we're all, we, we can like talk about this like this period of time I guess in western culture I can talk western culture but like past yeah. I don't know 300 years society has definitely changed especially in, on this side of the world um, and that's just based upon our roles and the, and what who's trying to push what when right so Yeah, what well, you kind of you kind of hinted at it, but do you think that men are failing women in these modern times? Hundred percent, hundred percent, and I feel really bad for a large percentage of women, um, and because men do not do not embrace their masculinity, they're they're, they're who they are as men. Like, yeah. you know, I think the issue that men have is, especially now, one of the negatives with social media is. You're fed something all the time. What a man's supposed to do, what a man's supposed to look like, what you're supposed to do. This is often like the minority opinion, but because social media is for everyone and everyone sees it, like that's the perspective you're going to get. And if you're not being raised, like we're talking about in the home, in a proper way where you're being led by your father or led by you know your mother and, and, and you know in, in the right way, especially in a, in a Christian way, you're going to be led by the next closest thing, which for a lot of kids growing up now is social media, um, is their influence in society. And like, I think culturally men have been weakened in that aspect. And then yeah. obviously I still believe in individual, like take responsibility for who you are. So don't blame someone else that you're failing, like you are the one who's failing. And yeah, I do think for sure that men have failed women in a lot of aspects for sure. Yeah. Well, how do we how do we rebuild the men? I think it's it has at this stage it has to start fundamentally from a Christian perspective. I think yeah. the more the more that God is preached, like I think if you look at the beginning, like let's say you take the United States for example, right? Like it was founded, and a lot of the Constitution, the principles are founded on God. So, so it was in the beginning, I believe, from historical, except for all the. The major issues, like, um, but from a general, like, fundamental standpoint, like, it was a lot of Christian values. So the roles were a certain way, right? And society looked one way. And not to say it was perfect. There are a lot of flaws in that. But, like, I think to get to a space now where we're actually really going back to those fundamentals, God has to be a major part of that. And unfortunately, I honestly don't know if we will get back to that stage. Um, 
just be, just because where we are now, you know, people say it's the end times. Uh, I have no opinion on on that, but it it's I'd be hard pressed to say that we're getting better. You know, yeah. I feel like a lot of change will happen in small groups. Um, I just feel like society, like like the world's gone to a stage now where it's hard to 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 go back to something that is universally better. Like, I don't think that's the stand that we're at in the world and, and, and like where we are now. Unfortunately, you know. I mean, I never say never. I don't want to feel like the guy who's like knocking everything and just like the world's doomed. I don't think that at all. But <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I think I think appreciating where we're at, like it's definitely an uphill battle, you know. And I think it starts in the church, honestly, and growing that and, and branching out from the community and like really building a foundation. Um, because right now the foundation is not God. It's again, it's the world. It's 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 the it's the devil and he works in a he works in a lot of the world now so like that is where so much of our our thought process comes from now and i think that's why we're so misguided and so off on our path you know as a group so i think god is the easy answer and is the right answer but to get that state i think it's it's hard for sure yeah yeah it's like uh castles built on sand yeah. Not on a firm foundation, you know, not, they're not, we're not building our lives on the truth. Mm -hmm. Not we, not me and you, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. not probably like half or most of the people watching this, you know, but like yeah. just people in like living today, they're not building their house on like the rock, right? They're building it on sand. And it's like any given moment that foundation will crumble. The first time a storm yeah. comes that will crumble, yeah. you know? And like, yeah, those who build like modest homes <laughs> on a firm foundation, yeah, they might not live as fun <laughs> lives or entertaining lives or be as like successful, quote unquote, to the world standard. But like, yep. we will survive the winter. <laughs> we will survive yeah. the storms. Yeah, for winter, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So I, my my viewers know because I, I bring this up all the time. And shout out to uh, Stephen Mansfield who actually like wrote about this in a book <laughs> but he has this great concept of like righteous masculinity and it's so important to like have first and foremost righteousness but then as a yep. man you have to be masculine as well and it's not either oh. or you have to have both you have to be righteous and then you have to be masculine and then oh, i yeah. even like on my streams kind of extrapolated it because to me it also is like if you want a biblical like if you want biblical terms for that the righteousness mm -hmm. is like faith. You have to have faith first, foremost. It's the most important. It's what you need for like absolutely first. But then masculinity yeah. is more like the actions, the works, right? So like you need both, but the first thing you need is faith and then yeah. works. The works will follow, but you have to have the works as well, right? Like mm -hmm. even Satan had faith. <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. like even satan even, believes in god right like that's yeah. but that is step one the thing that satan mm -hmm. doesn't have the thing that, that separates us as christians is that after that the works will follow you know yeah um the, you know, faith says, yeah. works is dead or whatever but know, like it's like yeah, righteousness and masculinity yeah. faith and then works and you have to have both but what's most important and first and foremost is faith is that like spiritual reunion with god you know yep there's there's a lot of different aspects of masculinity that the like the world will have like there's just i guess the term toxic masculinity and there are traits that are like toxic that's but that's not of god that's a this society that tells us men should be a certain way or men have been a certain way in the past yeah right, right so there, there's a difference like you said it has to be faith with it not just one not just the other it's a combination of both to get true local masculinity i guess yeah. yeah. Um, should we seek comfort and or discomfort? Uh, I definitely am for seeking discomfort. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it just sounds living... so weird when you say that. Like, what? What? <laughs> I know. I know. Like, You're not supposed to think that way. <laughs> I know. That, that's the thing, right? Like, 
but the best things in my life, and I think from from just serving God, have come from seeking discomfort, right? Like, as an example, like doing this thing here on social media, like I was very uncomfortable in like a public setting, like or like um, speaking on a platform. I said, you know what, I'm gonna go set out in faith. I'm gonna go do this, and then it worked out for me. And it was something that is actually a positive part of my life, you know, or reaching out to people, like. Even for most Christians, like reaching out and actually talking to someone who doesn't know about God and talking about your faith is uncomfortable because we're all people, like we still you know, have human emotion, human feelings. So, like, you don't want to feel rejected or feel awkward or whatever the interaction is going to be. That's discomfort, right? But, like, that leads to better things sometimes. Even if, if it doesn't, like, just still keep pushing that, right? Discomfort leads to uh, more positive if you're in comfort no i'm just staying in my bed i'm just gonna relax here and you know I'll, you're never gonna grow people and people around you are gonna suffer because you're not living up to your full potential so then they don't they're not affected as well right in a positive way so i guess the same you know the uh youtube group um what was it yes theory you heard of them i don't think so no yes theory yes theory yeah they uh their whole, I guess, message is seek discomfort. And I guess the whole point of it is they'll 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 travel to the most remote locations. They'll like interact with, and a lot of their situations I would not recommend, obviously. They're very out there, but like. <laughs> like learn from their channel, <laughs> but don't do it yourself. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to. You can, you, can, you can learn from a fool, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like yeah. some of their best experiences come from doing things that most people wouldn't do. And that could be very, or perceived as very uncomfortable. And their whole thing is seek discomfort because they're able to go out and then meet amazing people or have amazing experiences that they wouldn't otherwise have. So, yeah, I am fully for seeking discomfort. I think that's most people should take that and run with that because that's like the most productive and sometimes the most positive things come from that. Right on, yeah. Yeah. yeah I love the phrase someone posted this like a cool little picture one time like a friend of mine that said practice discomfort mm-hmm. and i like that because it's like because seek is is powerful right i mean you're mm-hmm. you're putting your energy towards acquiring something but like also like practicing is also a pretty powerful thing too like you're you're you are doing it you're living it out maybe you're not mm-hmm. like basing all of your actions for it but you're like bracing for the impact like you're bracing for the reality oh, that like this is gonna happen and you're training mm-hmm. for it and you're like building up like like you're stressing yourself so that you can build up immunity to it you know mm-hmm. but yeah i love, I love that <laughs> i like that we we're talking just like right off screen about you know i'm actually i'm thinking if it was where before we live or not but like you know paul when he went around you know, in, the, in Acts, like he's going city to city evangelizing and like starting churches and every single place he goes, he's met with like riots. He's met with people yep. that want to stone him, that, that want to imprison him, that want to like shut him up. And they're creating mm-hmm. like friction. They're making like, they're literally opposing him physically. Not just saying yep. like, hey, go away. No one wants you here. They're like literally physically restraining him and starting riots to stop him. Um, mm-hmm. And that probably is a good sign that like, <laughs> You're doing something yeah. good. You're doing something true, something beautiful, you know. You're making a positive change for the right reasons out there in the world when the world is yeah. trying to like stop you. You know? And like the opposite should be the case. Like if Paul was just walking into town and everyone's just like throwing out the red carpet and here <laughs> I have a bed for you, Paul. No, I have a bed for you. Yeah. Yeah. We'd all yeah. love for you to hear what you have to say today. <laughs> Like that's probably yeah. when you should uh, hit the brakes, pump the brakes a little bit, yeah. and wonder, wonder what's 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 wrong with this situation. Why is my life too comfortable and too easy right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, if, if Paul if Paul was getting a warm welcome, that that might have uh, been preaching a different message. I don't know. Yeah. But. <laughs> right. Well, it's like the prosperity gospel people. It's like, well, it must, like, like, look, it must be the true gospel. Look at how rich and successful they are. Look at their, look, they have millions of people and they're selling out stadiums. Look, they must be, God must be blessing them, you know? And it's like, uh, <laughs> That's what, uh, the, fact, I, <laughs> the fact that it's such an industry now says a lot, I think. Like, like Christian, it's not supposed to be, right? Like, I, 
you know, pulling out names like Joseph Prince and uh, Joel Olstein, like they are filthy rich, right? How does that happen? You know, it, that it, it's not like you're wealthy from like your life and then you happen to be a pastor. You're wealthy because of God, like because of your of your faith and in, in, in the church, which I first don't see a, a biblical backing to that at all. Um, and a lot of the message, it sounds nice, right? You can get so many people in the doors. The more people in the door, the more people, more money you're making, right? Because that's, it's just financial. And that's why it's, it's you have to be very careful who you're listening to, right? Who you're taking your information from. Because people, I see like people post stuff like, oh, look, this message sounds great and everyone loves it. And it's, it's a feel good message, but it's, it's shallow and it does, has no, no backing. And then yeah. people are, hearing this and they're feeding off it and then they're spreading that and it's it's a it's a web so yeah that's did you hear about or like follow that whole thing about um it was like a podcast series called the mars hill something and it was about that guy mark driscoll sorry i recognize the name but i don't think i followed anything so it was a whole thing. It was a whole, you know, it was basically it was made by like Christianity Today, but it was made by these people who are like deconstructionists, you know, so they're trying to yeah. deconstruct Christianity, which basically means like Satan is trying to <laughs> rewrite the gospel, yeah. you know, and package it as like family friendly and nice and, you know, good feelings and good vibes and positivity, you know. You're not a sinner. Yep. <laughs> Jesus loves you, you know? It's not like... <laughs> yep. Yep. Let's not talk God's about the fact that you're a sinner that needs repentance. You know, no, God, Jesus made you who you are, and he loves you that way, just the way you are. Yeah. Uh, God, is, God is love, <laughs> right? It's nothing wrong. But it's like he the story... In a, you know, just totally like a hit piece. I think if you're a Christian, you can kind of just see... You can just hear the hissing of a snake as you're listening to it, you know? <laughs> but it is like there is some truth to it right like that's why it's appealing like that's why it's some people buy into it because there is truth there it's like this guy mark driscoll kind of was like the first mega church preacher guy that used the internet like in 2005 ish to maybe 2013 i think is when the scandal kind of blew up he was like the yep. first person to like start using youtube and podcasts and no preacher or pastor was doing that now it seems silly because like every single person has a TikTok page and every oh, single yeah. person has every yep. church has a live stream feed. Every <laughs> so now at this point it seems so like, yeah, duh, of course. But like it really was like that first moment of like this guy kind of tapping into <laughs> the internet and becoming like a celebrity. And yep. you know, it blew up. Like and it's his fault. You know, he he flew too close to the sun, you know, and his wings got too hot and then he fell, you yep. know, and he was yep. just mega church. He's selling out like football stadiums, you know, he's getting yep. millions, if not billions of views and listens and follows, you know, but like what he failed to do was like be a good pastor. He failed to be a shepherd of his church and he was like vocal about like, I'm kind of this mentality of like, well, I'm so popular. People love me. I don't mm -hmm. need to be corrected. I don't need to be discipled. I don't need to be convicted. You know, oh, well, your church is only so-and-so big. I don't have to take yeah. your advice, John Piper. <laughs> or, you know, right. it's stuff like that where it's just like, oh, John Piper doesn't have a YouTube channel as big as me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then, like, yeah, he says some mean stuff, does some mean stuff to people in his church. Thing explodes. He has to resign. And then they make the big scandal and try to make this big hit smear piece on him. But to yep. me, what happened after that is what's the real story, which no one wants to talk about, where he repents, where he learns mm -hmm. what he did wrong, where he goes to a new church and starts rebuilding it and starts going, you know what? I don't need to be a celebrity anymore. That led to mm -hmm. my downfall. That led to such destruction. I left a, a path of destruction in the wake of where what I did. So I'm mm -hmm. going to do things right this time. You know, he yeah. repents, he apologizes, he rebuilds a church and he's like, this is not about views and clicks or my money or my fame. This is about leading people to Christ. You know, no yeah. one wants to bring that up. <laughs> they want to point, point to what happened 10 years ago and say, look at how bad, look at how mean, look at how stupid or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like that to me is is this. Like if you're in, in that moment, you're selling out stadiums, everyone loves you, it's compliments, you're, you're rich, you're famous, you yeah. know? 
you it's got to be really hard to not be like man god's blessing me man i must be doing yeah. things right man and like, we're, we're human right we're human so like that yeah. that can, used to go to someone's head and it just become it just kind of steamrolls after that so but that's why I, I actually did not hear about that story i'm surprised i haven't but that, that's that's a cool story especially, especially the ending though right like you can start at the right. beginning like you said and then follow on the the negative side of it but the fact that there's a positive at the end of it that's something that people actually should know because that that's really the story it's like the ending of the story which is yeah. a good thing so yeah and then i had this kind of same discussion with like a christian who was hating on him right they're like oh well he shouldn't be a pastor and it's like mm-hmm. i mean yeah but also like christianity is based on redemption <laughs> the whole yeah. thing is like you make mistakes and you repent and you go forward and you seek Christ, you seek to be perfect like Christ yeah. after that and then you're gonna fall again <laughs> mm-hmm. you're gonna yeah, fall short like, again and then you repent like, and you get back up and you start seeking perfection again you get back up and you start trying to sin no more and then you're gonna sin you know <laughs> but that's like the crucial thing of being a Christian is that it's are you getting back up are you repenting are you still trying to serve your Lord it's like you can't point at someone's mistakes and failures and say and let that define them forever. You know, especially if you're a Christian, like you need to not that that mentality is plaguing you and your spiritual connection with God. If you're looking at others and doing that. I'm, I'm surprised that would be a position because you know, look at Paul, the greatest example, right? He was yeah. a persecutor of Christians when he was Saul. He did the most awful thing. He actually killed believers, but he was still able to change turn that around and then be one of the most influential people right so like i mean that that argument is is i can't understand that one because like christianity is about redemption right so like if, you, if someone had like, like that pastor and he fell you know in, into the world he's able to come back and still do good that shouldn't be a criticism that should be something that is something that's learned from but then made an example right so yep. yeah i <laughs> yeah and I get that, like, I think it just happens. I think, I think people, you know, because Christians aren't perfect and mm-hmm. like, you do have this natural, like flesh urge to like judge and compare yeah. yourself with others. And then it's like the, the, going back to that prodigal son thing, like I'm actually in the boat where and you feel free to disagree with me, but like, I actually kind of do feel bad for that. Like the, the younger son or the older, the son that was there. I think he was mm-hmm. the older son actually. Right. Yeah, the it one, was yeah. like he was there. He was obedient. He did everything right. And then here mm-hmm. comes that. The, here comes that. That screw up, you know. And yeah. he's and, and, and he huge. wasted all of our family money. He did all of this stupid, selfish stuff. And then dad's just gonna come and welcome him back without any yeah. kind of punishment or you know any kind of like real apology. Like the dad stops him before he can even apologize. You know, he's gonna mm-hmm. give him the. He's gonna give him the fattest calf. I only got a goat. <laughs> it's like that son, that son is actually in the right. And like, I, I think that is like a very natural tendency for us to have, but also we have to break it, but also that we yeah. can't sit there and linger in that and just assume that that's good because like also Jesus in that moment is telling that parable to the face of the Pharisees because that's what they're doing. They're being that mm-hmm. second son or that older son, you know, but the difference between the Pharisees and like a Christian is like, I think a Christian could be that that older son if that older son then fights off that flesh urge to be, compare and judge mm-hmm. and does kind of realize and let God let the Father work, you know, mm-hmm. understand like maybe this isn't about me, maybe this is about something greater, you know, maybe this is going to be about God's glory and yeah, I, I only got to go, but I still got something, you mm-hmm. know. Whereas the Pharisees yeah. couldn't shake that, and people who have yeah. that like, Pharisaical mind can't shake that it is about them it is their th- about themselves only you know mm-hmm. um, but i think that is kind of a natural thing we all have in us because it does happen a I, lot like for sure no it's, 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 i was saying it's about that humility right it's about understanding that we're all like and ryan's supposed to be able to be a part of this of his kingdom right we, we fell from grace a long time ago so like understanding that even if you have been like consistent, you've been doing everything right, or you have the brother that fell and they're coming back and or whoever it is, like we're all should be very grateful to God that we're actually allowed to be a part of his kingdom. You know, like yeah. we're not, um, our works, like we said before, our works don't get us in heaven. So like to be like, oh, well, 
I've been good for so long and you're just coming up and now, you know, it seems unfair, but big picture, like none of us are worth it, right? So I think it's keeping that in your mind as well. Like we're not worthy of his grace. He still gives it to us. That's the big, that's the big picture I think for us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's tough. It's tough for people. Mm-hmm. To... <laughs> yeah. Tough for people to handle. For real. And then, for real. I've done a lot of works my whole life and you're now telling me that I, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't seem fair, right? It doesn't seem fair. Like I've been good for so long. Like how is, how is this person that's greater than our understanding? So, yeah. Well, I, uh, I did a whole stream about it before and I talk about it pretty often, but I'm like a big Muslim respecter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so hear me out. Because <laughs> Muslims actually do like place some pretty high honors on Jesus. They do place mm-hmm. high honors on Mary. Like they do believe that like there was a virgin birth. They do believe that like Jesus was, they call him a prophet, you know. So yeah. they don't think he was the final prophet. Obviously they think Muhammad came after him, was the greater final yeah. prophet or whatever. But it's like they at least do play some pretty they, they put some respect on that name you know they'll say esau peace be, peace be upon him you know which is jesus you know but like yeah. the thing about muslims is that i and i do believe they know the father like they know about him in their mind they read about him like they do read like the, the old testament they do read about jesus they do read about mary the problem they yeah. have is like they're a solely works based you know islam means submission like they are holy and submitted to the father, but they mm-hmm. refuse to have any sort of relationship with his son. They refuse to allow the Holy Spirit into their life, into their hearts, into their lives. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, so they just are in this whole like works, 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 works. And you, people could say they have faith. They could say they have faith, but like they don't. They're lacking like that first step, which is like being yeah. saved by the grace of God with faith. You know, they don't have that. Yeah. But they are being yep. obedient, you know? And it's like the Pharisees too. Like the Pharisees are being very obedient, but God was staring them in the face saying, <laughs> I am right here, bro. <laughs> Come to me. Like, no. Yeah. Very, very no. similar situation, right? Very no, similar. I'm, I'm, my works will say, yeah, I don't need you, Jesus. You know, yeah. like that's literally what they were saying. And that's what Muslims say too. And like, I think they're waking up too. I don't know if you've heard about this, but like a lot of Muslims are waking up right now. Like there's a revolution happening where like Christ is coming to Muslims in dreams and waking them up and changing them and evangelizing to them, you know? Yeah. And uh, like all- Iran right now is dealing with this problem a lot. Yemen's dealing with this problem of like these radical transformations with like no missionaries there. No one's evangelizing yeah. there and yet they're becoming Christian. And I think they said one out of three, one out of three people who are born and raised in a Muslim society say they converted to Christianity because they they had they saw Jesus in a dream, they spoke or communicated with Jesus in a dream. Wow. And I just think it, they're so close; they just don't. They're not hearing the right gospel, and they are just <laughs> in these places and in these societies and cultures where it is like just so works, 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 works. Yeah. And they don't have the most important part of it, <laughs> which is the faith that comes before works, you know? But and that's where we I get, do too. Our that's side where, is right. Sorry. No, so no, that's where our side comes in as Christians, right? Is to be part of evangelizing, to, to give yeah. people that last step, right? That, that's that's why it's not just an individual thing. It's about trying to get that message out and mis- missionary and being part of that process. That's our biggest calling as Christians, right? So to bring those people in. Who are on the verge yeah the tough thing is like are you can we just go to like saudi arabia right now and do that like you want to book a flight with me and... <laughs> talk about persecution we're talking about seeking discomfort you want to come to oh, yeah. saudi arabia tomorrow <laughs> that might be the end of it right there for you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> But that is, and then that's where God moves, and that's proof of God moving. So even when we fail, when we as Christians fail to evangelize to those in Yemen or in Iran, uh, God finds a way still, Mm -hmm. you know, and he's not going to force them. He's going to give them a choice. He's going to come to them in a dream and say, choose me, accept me. Are you willing to do that? It's going to radically uproot your entire life. It might lead to persecution and death because your country Mm -hmm. may or may not be really strict against this. And these people are doing it. 
Like, that's so powerful. And you were yeah. saying that like, the difference between the West and the East is like, I actually see a lot, like Iran, Yemen, um, Jordan, it's happened a lot in Jordan, and there's always this country, I forget the name of it, Bahrain, Bahrain, it's like a Muslim majority, yeah. pretty strict country. And mm -hmm. they're like, re really having a hard time right now with like stopping the spread of Christianity. They're like persecuting churches, persecuting Christians, you know? And then yep. also I did a stream too about China. So China yeah. is having oh. this radical transformation, like, ra like it's just spreading mm -hmm. like wildfire and the government is like failing to keep up with its persecution. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard about that. Yeah. And they predicting by, I think it's, I think it's by 2100, there's going to be 400 million Christians in China, which wow. is more than the population of the United States, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of Christians. And you don't usually that's, think of Christian when you think of China, right? No, and that's impressive given that there's so much persecution of the faith. And that's yeah. people still coming to Jesus despite of that. It's pretty awesome, honestly. Yeah. And that's a testament. And like, so as much as the West has been abandoning our faith, like the East is on <laughs> fire right now. It's awesome. And they can't even stop it. They have like them all, like the, their entire government is like trying so hard to oppress and stop it with force and they cannot do it. Yeah. You, you can argue that we've had it too easy over here. Like we've gotten yeah. so used to comfort yeah. that like it kind of becomes easy. And then we just kind of, we're not too sincere about it. But like, like I have major respect for people in countries where their life is literally on the line. And they're still accepting Jesus and like living that faith out. It's a real testimony in my mind. Yeah. Makes me jealous. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I do kind of I do kind of get those thoughts of like maybe I can just like move to China. <laughs> Be a preacher in China. <laughs> Cuz there are these videos, these like really powerful videos of like people smuggling in Bibles. Mm -hmm. So they can have Bibles in China, but it's like state approved and so the state will rewrite the Bible. And basically yeah. take out miracles or take out any, any kind of divinity, you know? Um, so it kind of turns into a historical book. And I think they even really phrase, rephrase a lot of stuff in it, you know? But then people will smuggle in like Chinese Bibles that are like the actual authentic translation. And they'll like yeah. smuggle them in suitcases and like open them up, you know? And it's these people, these like Chinese people picking up this Bible and holding it like it's a newborn baby that took them, you know, 20 years to, to give birth to, you yeah. know, like you can That's just awesome. tell, like, they'll never let this go <laughs> ever again. They're crying. They're hugging. They're so yeah. thankful for it. And then it's like, but there are nights where I'm like, eh, I'm kind of tired. Yep. I'm just going to oh, go yeah. to bed. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of moments where me and a lot of Christians out there who are Christians, who are believing, who are pretty on fire, who are pretty like on mission. They won't pick up yep. the Bibles a, a good amount of time. They'll skip over it yep. a few nights a week, you know, if yep. not a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. you look at these people yeah. and they're just like, you will not stop me <laughs> from reading this, from keeping this in my hands. Like yeah. so unbelievably it, it, appreciative of it. It's so real to them, right? It's just like, we're so used to having the Bible right there every day in our face whenever we want it. It becomes yeah. more of a routine than anything else. So. I, I get what you mean with the jealousy side of it. That's, that is, <laughs> I can understand that. Yeah. Well, and too, then but, they'll have like church, quote unquote church. So that's another mm -hmm. funny thing is they have churches that also like the state government has to approve and they'll put in, they'll put like spies, like the government spies in there to kind of make sure yeah. things aren't getting too crazy. Make sure the yeah. real gospel is not being preached. <laughs> um, there's even rules of like the churches, they make sure they limit, they can't have steeples. Because they can't, and they can't have crosses on top of their building because they don't want the people to look up at God. They want mm -hmm. people like eyes level on, you know, and they want the government to be higher spiritually and physically above these people. Yeah. But then like people will just go to farms. They'll go to like caves and just have church. And they'll have mm -hmm. these people because they don't really have Bibles. Um, they have like people that know that have read it before, like preachers who have like memorized scripture or who just pretty much know it will just yep. speak and they'll speak for like 10 hours. So these people will just try to like repeat the Bible for like 10 straight hours or just give like 10 hour long, 12 hour long sermons, you know? And those people will sit in a cave, like sitting on rocks you know? <laughs> for like 10, 12 straight hours, no food, no oh. snacks, no 
checking their phone, their status updates, or <laughs> yawning, and, you know, when is this over? I got an NFL Sunday kickoff. This <laughs> <gonna> play Sunday. <laughs> Titans game is playing. I got I to gotta go. I got to leave early, sneak out when the worship music kicks in, you know? No, uh, none of that, man. It's like so they're just so on fire, you know? And so, yeah, like in the, in the West, it's like, yeah, this comfort has just destroyed us to the point of like, total unbelief <laughs> total disbelief yep. and then in the yep. east though and that, not everywhere right and maybe, probably not even the majority but millions and tens of millions if not hundreds of millions are doing this yep. and that is like mm-hmm. yeah it does make me jealous that i'm not a part of it but also just happy that it is taking place yeah for sure yeah well um i was gonna ask how much control do you have over your life Oh, so much control. I mean, technically, God has all the control, but like, we're all free will, right? So, we, we, I mentioned earlier, I completely believe in like being responsible for yourself. Like, you take responsibility, we're responsible for our actions. So, you know, we have all the control. It's just giving it to God and understanding that we are, our free will should coincide with God's plan for us. So, like, I have control. I can choose right now to not go to church again. I can choose to not, you know, open my Bible. I can choose to go live a different life and live it up, right? Enjoy the pleasures of now. So, yeah, I can I, I can choose that, or I can choose to follow God, and that's on my soul, right? So, I know I know I'm going to choose, but yeah, I think yeah. I think 100. percent And do you? Do you, similarly, do you trust God's plan more than your own? That's a good question. <laughs> I think so. I, yeah. I think sometimes we get them both mixed up. So, like, I might think that what, what you know, what I want, well, I'm going to try and go for this. I think this is what I should do. I and, mean, like, not, I think being closer to God, you can understand his plan for your life. You try to like, make it up on your own and like do your own thing, have your own plan, you know. And that thing is a, a hard, a hard spot to be in sometimes. Like sometimes it is hard, genuinely hard to know what God's plan is, right? So I, I think, I think the, the important thing is to always stay in prayer and stay really close to God and in connection with Him, and then those things will start to just kind of come together, right? Like, yeah. like the best decisions that I've made have been when I've been closest to God. It's probably the best way to put that. Yeah. It's like, it's so weird how that happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like all throughout the Bible and then all throughout your life. Like when did, when did times really work out the way they truly like, in a way that was so magical, so powerful, so real, yep. so authentically good. It's mm-hmm. like when you're trusting in God and yep. then like, time and time again <laughs> you get to that point where you're like oh okay thanks god i don't need you anymore i'm gonna i got, I got, this, I got this yeah 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 i got this don't worry <laughs> me me time now i i'm i'm good thanks for making me powerful god now i'm in control you know yep 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 <laughs> like from the yep. first man <laughs> all the way till now yeah I heard a good, good sermon the other day about, you know, the guy was talking about, and I'm sure everyone has kind of discussed this in like a small group or in their church where it's like, you look at like all like Israel and just time and time again, you're like, how could you be so stupid? Yeah. <laughs> how? Like, why, why did you guys lose your faith? Like, oh, didn't God prove himself to you over and over again? And it's like, that's you. Yeah, <laughs> you understand you're reading a story about you. It's just not mm-hmm. exactly your life, you know. Yeah, and it is so true. Like you, you're like, oh man, he parted the seas. He he, he rained food down. You know, he he's leading yep. you to the promised land that you you know. And yet still, just time now. You're, guys, put the bowl away. Guys, <laughs> put the golden bowl away. Okay? <laughs> it's been 10 minutes. Moses has been gone for 10 minutes and you're already like... <laughs> and yep. you look back yep. and you're like, how could you be so dumb? How could you have such weak faith, you know? But then when you take a step back and look at yourself, like, 
what did you do yesterday? What did you do in the last month? You know, what, what how much, how often did you abandon God? Because I got this. Yep. <laughs> I'm in control. You know, I don't need him anymore. Yeah, and that's right. It's so easy for us to judge, right? We're like, oh yeah, look at you. Why, why'd you do this? And, and you look in the mirror and you realize, oh, I'm, I'm kind of doing the same thing, right? Just yeah. in a different way. And that, that's, that's just us as humans, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're wired, we're wired that way. And so now it's funny. Like, oh, yeah, I, I did my own thing and this happened. And oh, follow God, it worked out. And I forget to do the same things over again. But. Yeah. Did you ever, have you ever seen that, like, Paul, that infamous Paul Washer speech that he gave at, like, I think it was the Passion Conference back in the day? I don't Early think so. Early 2000s or something? It's kind of Probably like, this, it's kind of like, a, I think it was like one of the first viral church clips. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of made Paul Washer pretty famous, you know, but it's like, he's, I think it's passion or one of those big conferences. And it's like maybe 15 years ago. So it wasn't as big. It wasn't like a, you know, <laughs> Atlanta yeah. football stadium, big, but pretty big. And he mm -hmm. gives a speech and he's talking about like luke lukewarm Christianity. And he's kind of talking about like unbelievers and I'm not going to do him justice. Definitely go look up the video, but uh, <laughs> sometime later on. But he gives this whole speech about how, and you, you, he's setting it, he's setting it up, right? And you think he's talking about non-believers. He's like, you live in yeah. the world, you're living for yourself, you're selfish, you're, you know, you're, you're so, you don't trust God, you only trust yourself. And he keeps like lashing into him, and the crowd's like, like yeah, like cheering, because they all think they're Christians. They all think, yeah, we're here at this yeah. conference. And he's setting them up, and there's one point where he, I think he says something like, you know, and they don't, don't do anything that. Uh, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations. And everyone's like mm -hmm. cheering. He gets to yep. some point and everyone's like kind of cheering and clapping like, yeah. And he goes, I don't know why you're cheering. I'm talking about you. <laughs> and it's just like, boom, like you could literally, like literally <laughs> hear a mic, a mouse squeak <laughs> a mile away. You know? Yeah, and it was so it was so real. Like it is like one of those powerful things. And then like he's not just talking about that conference. He's talking about mm -hmm. me and you listening to that. You know, yep. it really yep. is this powerful moment where you're like, even that you're like, oh yeah, yeah, these stupid people going to passion conference. Uh, they, they're not Christians. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, yep. he's not. He's not talking to that audience. He's talking to you as well, the listener right now. You know, are you doing yep. enough? Um, are you obeying and serving the Lord, you know, like, and yeah, I just often have those realizations at times because you, you do slip away and then you have to like catch yourself. You have to take that step back. And that's why you, I too, like you do have to really be in scripture like every night, all the time, you know, always in prayer because that helps you yep. keep your eyes, get your eyes back to being fixated on eternity and not <laughs> me, <laughs> my, my, my power, my, 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 me, me, me. <laughs> Yep. Um, yeah, I want to get your opinion on this. Do you think that anger and or fear are good things? Okay. So I'll say this first. My battery is 10%. So just give me a warning. Heads up. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, so in a lot of ways, yes. I think anger is a good thing. I always reference Jesus when he went to the temple. And he overturned the, the money changers because they were doing something wrong in his house, right? I think anger in the right way is always a good thing. But indignation, like anger towards someone, just hatred, never, should never be tolerated. I think, like, if you're angry about a good thing, like, if you're, like, let's say about a topic like abortion, you're angry about children being slaughtered, or you're angry that there's uh, Christians being persecuted, or whatever it is, there's always a good kind of anger. Right, there's good and there's bad on both sides. So like I'm if anger placed in the right way, yes, hundred percent. What about fear? Fear. I think we're always gonna <laughs> have fear, but <laughs> like I, that, I feel like every day there's something that we're either rationally or irrationally fearful about, right? Um I mean, we're not supposed to fear. If you're like, as rude as you are in God, you're supposed to have that confidence, right? That you know, that your soul and, and everything else around you is going to work out. But like, 
I think, I don't know if it's, I wouldn't say it's wrong to have fear. I would say, root yourself in God to the point where you're not filled with fear. Because I think fear is a natural human emotion to so many things, right? There's, it's just, it's how we, it's anger the same way. Fear, it's just, that's how we react to a situation in our lives. But I think it's being able to reel it in, understand that you are covered by God, covered by His, His grace and His protection. Then you can place that emotion differently. You can now say, okay, well, yeah, this is a very concerning situation or you know this situation is very it's stressful but like i understand that god is in control so even though i have this emotion of fear right the bible says do not fear do not worry it's basically saying right give that to god right and allow him to be the ruler of that emotion and, and that situation so i think fear in itself is not wrong it's natural it's just i think being able to compartmentalize the fact that we feel a certain way but it's in God's hands. That's how I'd answer that. Yeah, love that. Yeah. Yeah, my recent thing has been, um, especially at my job, I work like landscape construction, and we often okay. have to load these big giant like skid steer machines up these yeah. ramps to put them on a trailer mm -hmm. to like drive them to the job site. And our ramps are like pretty s steep. <laughs> like my specific <laughs> companies, you know? So we have these uh -huh. like giant, you know, I don't know how many pounds, but tons of pounds of machine. You know, we're going way too steep. And there's kind of a moment where like it tips, you know, it's, a tr it's two tracks. Yeah. So it's not like wheels. So you kind of tip like you're leaning really far back or you're leaning really far <laughs> forward. Um, and then so it is like and then even if like your mind isn't really scared, your gut just gets that like roller yeah. coaster feeling, you know. And it's yep. one of those things like every time, it, you know, you watch everyone do it or you do it, it. It's like every time it makes it up, it falls, it sets on the, you know, or you're backing up and every time it makes it down safely. Mm -hmm. um, but then just like, like a week ago, basically, I messed up and went a little too fast and yep. flipped it. And literally, I mean, I was horizontal. <laughs> I got <laughs> caught like I, it, the machine <laughs> caught itself, you know, like it has like a metal huh? plate in the back. But like, yeah. man, it was really <laughs> <That> terrifying. <laughs> and it was just one of those moments too, where you're like half terrified, but half like, okay, yep. take action. Like that fight or flight kicks yep. in where you just kind of like, yep. okay, you jostle it, you push a little gas, you, you hit reverse, you know, at the right time mm -hmm. and you kind of catch yep. yourself. But so yep. ever since then, I keep having to like load none of these machines. And what I have to like reinforce my mind is you were not given a spirit of fear. The Lord did not give you a spirit of fear. <laughs> so I just kind of repeat of that and just put that in my head. And like, as I'm doing it, you know, and then still like even today, I was like doing a smaller machine, but it was like, God did not give you a spirit of fear. This is lies from the enemy. <laughs> this is a spiritual attack. And so you're just like, I got this. I got this, you know, and it still is yep. like scary. You still get that gut feeling, but like then you do it and you're like, yeah. Yep. Yeah, he did not. <laughs> he gave us a spirit of truth, love, and hope, you know, not fear and, yep. you know, yep. yeah, despair. Our love and a sound mind. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, well, yeah right on. Uh, I have one final, final question for you, but before that, do you want to just, again, like, give any, like, plugs or shout-outs for the people out there? I mean, it's really just the account, you know? Follow me, Isaiah Talks Faith, you know? And also, I just want to say, if anyone's watching you want to follow message me as well like i yeah. comments are always nice and all that but like i love conversation with individual people I, I take my time to read all of them and like respond and have actual conversations and connections so message me i'm always open always answering so yeah you might get it i get, I get some people <laughs> i do the same <laughs> thing i love doing it and like yeah. i get some haters in the in the dms i get some like kind of you can kind yeah. of tell they might be seeking some truth but they're still just not ready yet you know uh, and yeah. then i get some yeah. like authentic like oh, i'm feeling that pull i just don't know where to start can you help me you know and it's like yeah. in two of those scenarios i actually like engaging <laughs> one of them you have to just hit block and move on you know but like yes yeah. even i kind of do dive into like the debates and the contra you know the controversial oh, I'm, I'm the same but and, I'm the same way. But like if the comment section is like 25, 30 comments down, I realize it's going nowhere. Right. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'm like, like, we've had a good conversation. 
message me up privately if you want to keep talking but like yeah. this is not anybody else out so like it's you know god bless right but yeah it's fun i had a lot of those it's very very entertaining and challenging sometimes too <laughs> yeah when I had one, one, one person made a good point when I was making the comment about Twitter, and I'll say this quick, sorry, I know the battery's dying, but like, you know, you get in these, these threads and you're just, you're trying to like preach, you're trying to like preach the gospel, you're trying to be nice, and this person yep. just is not grasping it, he's insulting, it's like, you can yep. just tell, it's like, a, it's like anger and despair and mm -hmm. hatred, but like, you yep. just keep doing it, you keep shining the yep. light, you keep, you know... Yep. And like, you can make the argument, like, don't engage with that person. And mm -hmm. like, more likely than not, yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but someone made a comment one time when I was saying that, like, yeah, just block them, just ban them, just stop having that conversation. You're not going to win that person over. Like, his heart is hard. He's not mm -hmm. anywhere close to being ready to receive the gospel yet. You know, that yep. you're, you're throwing seed on rocks and hoping it's going to sprout, right? You're not throwing mm -hmm. seed on good soil. But someone made a comment that like, but other people might look at that. And yeah. if other people do look at that and they see this person that's just ignorant and stupid and mean and hateful, mm -hmm. and they see you responding with like love and peace yeah. and confidence and the truth, you know, that could inspire, yeah. not that, you know, I am a troll 42 or whatever that's commenting with you, but like the, the person that is clicking on that thread and reading it, that yeah. could actually plant a seed in that person's head. So I struggle with that because I I do just kind of have a natural reaction to just be like ah okay yeah. this isn't going anywhere <laughs> block it's delete that stop yeah yeah it's that balance you gotta find a, some like if you, you go on long enough that you make your point and then if it's the exact same thing you're, you're texting you're, you're matching the same stuff back and forth yeah yeah then all right it's not going anywhere so but yeah I've I've done that more than my fair share of of times so <laughs> yeah yeah. Right on, yeah. Well, my final question is, did you have a fun time tonight? I have. It's been a blast. Yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> and I was like, I was, I was watching some of your videos. I, I, I enjoyed it. And I was like, yeah, this is going to be a good time. So this this has been good. I've enjoyed it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah I'm glad you came on. I'm, I thank you for rescheduling. I'm sorry about that again. Oh, sure. yeah. No, it was good. <laughs> I literally, for the past few months, I had nothing going on. So you could tell me any date. I was pretty much open, so like, we're, we're good. Awesome. Yeah, we'll have yeah. to do this again. I have a bunch more oh, questions for, and topics to get to, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And in the meantime, keep making those videos, man. They're great. Yeah, thanks. Hey, same They're to you. Great. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, li I like what you're doing, man. It's, it's good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, bro. <laughs> <laughs>